it's your girl Angie and welcome to First Metropolitan's online worship experience. We're so glad that you guys joined us again today. What we want you to do is to connect with our ministry by texting the word CONNECT, C-O-N-N-E-C-T, to the number 713-364-1037. That's a perfect way to get in touch with us here at the ministry, even though we are not physically on the grounds. Now, today is Communion Sunday, so go ahead, go to the kitchen now, grab your communion elements, a cup of juice, you know, bread, crackers, whatever it is that you have in your cabinet would be great. And we're going to do a communion a little bit later on in our service. We also have a special rebroadcasted message from Pastor O about being able to surrender. So go ahead, get your Bible, get your note tablet, all those good things so that you're ready to receive God's word. But right now, we're about to get into it.
Good morning and welcome to First Metropolitan Church. I am so excited to see each and every one of you and to our First Met family and those of you that are worshiping online. I want to say that you're my online family and we welcome you as well. We welcome you to First Metropolitan Church because it is the Lord's house. It is a place where you belong. And today is the Lord's day. And we are so happy that you have chosen to worship with us on this day. So you are in for a blessing as we all worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Let us go to the Lord in prayer as we ask the Lord's blessings upon this service today. Uh, so would you bow with me and pray wherever you are uh, and call upon the Lord in your place because that is your worship place. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you now for as we pause, God, we just want to open our minds and hearts and our mouths to say to you, we love you. And God, even though we're going through some things right now, we know, God, that you are our Father and everything that we need, God, you shall supply. So God, my prayer this morning is that you would do what you said you're gonna do. You said you'd never leave us nor forsake us. So Father God, we ask that you would just send your Holy Spirit to be in the rooms with those that are going through bereavement. God, this is a difficult time as I know it didn't catch you by surprise and you understand and you know that we're all going through some things. Missing our loved ones, missing touching and being with others. Some people are very lonely. God, you said you'd be a company keeper. So God, be their company and lift them up. Let no depression come upon them in the name of Jesus. And God, some are wondering what this economy is going to be like. Will I have a job? Will I lose my house? Will I be able to pay my bills? God, we, you know, we know you as the provider. You own everything. So God, let us trust you. Uh, keep us trusting and keep our faith strong. When we get weak or when we feel like we just can't carry on and we don't know how we're going to make it, send an angel. Send someone to speak into our lives to let us know that this too shall pass and you will always make a way out of no way. So Father, we trust you, we bless you, we love you, and we ask your divine blessings upon everybody that is hearing my voice, God. You know the needs. I may not have called them God, but you know. And we just touch and agree right now that every need that is being thought of, every tear that needs to be dried, God, we claim it all to be done in your son's name. In your name we pray, amen, and we thank you for what you're going to do. We call it done, amen? Amen. If you believe that today and if you pray with me, why don't you just wherever you are in your room, just shut hallelujah, it is done, and I leave it at the altar with you, God. So, now we need to go back to worship and see what the word has to say. I know it's going to encourage you. So stay tuned. We'll go back into worship now where we can be encouraged by the word. Greetings, First Met. It is my honor to be able to share with you today on one of the most holy and celebrated days of our faith, and that is Communion Sunday. Uh, this is the day where we set aside time to uh, just focus upon the sacrifice of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ uh, and exactly what that means for each one of us. Uh, Paul writes in 1 uh, Corinthians, the 11th chapter, uh, verse 23, he says, For I received uh, from the Lord that's what I also pass on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you do it in remembrance of me. For whenever you drink, eat of the bread and drink of the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. I want to invite you in this moment just to make a proclamation. To make a proclamation about what you believe, about what you understand, about what you have experienced, about what he has spoken, about what he has done, about what he has revealed, 
about how he has forgiven, about the love that he has shared, about the grace he has shown, about the favor he has displayed all upon you. I reminded in this moment, he did this on the night that he was betrayed. I stand before him much like you stand before him as one who has betrayed him, who has not honored completely our covenant. And yet he still made the sacrifice for both you and I. So I want to invite you on today to share in this moment, to acknowledge who you are and to acknowledge who he is, to acknowledge what he has done and to acknowledge what he is going to do. He's going to come back for us all because of a sacrifice. Heavenly Father, we love you. God, we thank you for your sacrifice. God, we thank you for your body which was beaten for us. God, we thank you for the blood that was shed for us. We thank you that you kept yourself pure so that you could be a perfect sacrifice all to be in reunion with us. God, we ask that you would honor this moment with your presence and you would receive this act as a sign that we believe and that we trust you and that we are eagerly awaiting for your return. Thank you, in Jesus' name, amen. If you have your elements with you, first let us partake of the body. met there are so many things that God has done for us he made the ultimate sacrifice by giving his life for us by by leaving heaven coming into this timeline the timeline that he created for you and I and he lived and dwelt among us kept himself as a perfect sacrifice and gave his life for us so what better way to celebrate that but not just celebrating through communion but giving an offering it is offering time so I'm hoping that you're excited because God has made the ultimate sacrifice for you and all he's required for us to do is to share some of the blessings that he has given to us with him so that this church can continue to be a blessing to others so first man has a variety of ways that you can give and there are two that we really focus on uh, and that's push pain and then we also have Fellowship One. Now, if you have your phones with you or your um, your mobile device, you can go to the app store of your choosing and you can type in First Metropolitan Church of Houston or First Met Church or First Metropolitan of Houston. And you can download the app onto your device. After that, register your account and giving literally takes about 30 to 60 seconds. I'm telling you, you can do it under in under a minute. Now, for those of you who don't have a mobile device and want to give via the web, we have Fellowship One. Go to our website, myfirstmed.com, and then at the bottom, you'll see the member portal. That portal is for you. You can get all sorts of information there, but one of the things that you can get there is an opportunity to give to First Metropolitan Church. So we want you to use that portal, register your Fellowship One account, and once you register, literally, giving takes. You name it, six six. I'm telling you, it's it very easy. We thank those of you who continue to send in your tithes and offers. Stop by the church, give me your tithes and offers. We are grateful for your contribution, for your spirit of giving, and your the spirit of generosity that is in this body. We are doing great things in this community and in this world, all because of you. God bless you, and let's continue to give and honor the Lord with the wealth that He's given us. Your word is put forth. I send your anointing and bless us. God, we need it. We're hungry. We are hungry for you and your word. So please speak. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Holy Spirit, come like a river, come with your presence, we
we are in need of you. Holy Spirit, come and take over. Won't you come and breathe on address this um, subject uh, today, I surrender. I surrender. Would you say that? Make sure I get this adjusted right. I surrender. To surrender is defined as to give up control of something or to give something to another. Uh, it is yielding to Another, it is releasing a claim uh, of on something in favor of another. Uh, surrender, I sir, surrender. Um, uh, some of you know I'm an avid fight fan. I love fights. It goes back to my uh, Muhammad Ali days. I love fights and. I will rent all the top fights and, and view them. Uh, last Saturday night, though, didn't have to go pay-per-view for a fight that aired. It was the welterweight championship fight between the undefeated Earl Spence Jr. and Lamont Peterson, uh, who was a former champ. Uh, I don't know if you got to see the fight, uh, but uh, it was a grueling battle. And uh, you can see why Earl Spence is, is undefeated. He's very masterful, a lot of power. Uh, he knocked uh, uh, Peterson down in the fifth round. And, and uh, after seven rounds of dominance, uh, his corner uh, threw in the towel. They stopped the fight. Uh, they said for him, uh, I surrender. And when he stopped, he surrendered his pursuit for the championship. He surrendered his desire uh, to win that fight. Um, Jesus, in our text today, is teaching us how to pray and what he desires for us is to throw in the towel. He says this in so many words when he says, for us to pray, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. When we speak of the kingdom, uh, to be sure, it has a dual meaning in this text. Uh, the kingdom that Jesus is to set up when he returns. Uh, the Bible teaches that, it's prophetically taught uh, that the Messiah would come back and reign and set everything in order. But it also has a dual meaning in this text, and not just an eschatological meaning, it, it also means in this text God's rule and reign in our lives. Amen? And that is what takes place in the human heart to allow Jesus the Christ to not just be Savior, but also to be Lord. 
Can I get an amen on that? We love the Savior part. He shed his blood. He died for us. And if we accept him, that means we're going to heaven. Amen? We're going to live in eternity in the presence of God. But we, we don't like is the Lord part. Because the Lord means he is master. He is ruler over your life. Amen? And what we have to understand is that Jesus is not saying he will be one without the other. Come on, somebody. Look at your neighbor and say, not one without the other. He's going to be both or not anything at all. Amen? And it's hard for us to really grasp this because we live in America. We live in a democracy. Uh, we, we have a president, and we, we'll quick say, he can't tell me nothing. I didn't vote for him. I'm, I'm testifying for some of y'all. But in that day when this was written, there were no democracies. There were only kings and kingdoms. And whatever the king decreed, it had to be followed by every person in the kingdom. Are y'all listening to me? Uh, there was no question as to whether you, if the king said, on Monday we're all going to wear green. Even if you didn't have green, you better die something or buy something. Amen? It was unquestioned what could be, what had to be followed. And what we have to understand in this kingdom and kingdom thing, Jesus says, pray your kingdom come. The Jews saw our eternal God as the king of the universe. There were earthly kings, but they saw him as the king of the universe. In Psalm 91, uh, 99 and 1, it says, the Lord, speaking of God, speaking of the heavenly father, he is king. Let the, let the nations tremble. He sits on his throne before the cherubim, the angelic beings. Let the whole earth quake. That he is the sovereign king of the universe. So when Jesus is telling us to pray to the heavenly father, your kingdom come. We are recognizing his sovereignty. Can you say amen? amen? And he is telling us to pray a prayer of surrender. Okay? It's, it's a prayer for the move, the mark, and the manifestation of the kingdom in our lives, in our hearts. Uh, it, it, some Christians, we have to admit, I, I should say some church folk, can't pray this prayer. Your kingdom come. Because they've been in church too long. And they have set up their own kingdoms. They like to be in control. They are self-absorbed, self-made, self-taught, self-directed, self-protected. They are self-righteous. Come on, somebody. They have their own habits, their own likes, dislikes, their own opinions, their own reputations, and they have established their own. Jesus says, pray, surrender. You have too many folks using the my when it comes to the work of the Lord, my ministry, my room, my program, 
my class, my material, my song, my team, my seat. We even got seats. We have to be careful with that. Jesus says, pray your kingdom. Your kingdom come, not mine, not brother so-and-so's kingdom, not sister so-and-so's kingdom. We need to pray your kingdom, Father. Your kingdom come. Somebody say, I surrender. Jesus Christ himself lived a life of surrender. He surrendered to the Father. He had come, but you hear him say time and time again, he talks about the Father, what he could and what he could not do. And he had to talk to the Father. That's, that's for the Father. John 5 and 19, he says, I tell you the truth, the Son can do nothing by himself. He can only do what he sees his father doing because whatever the father does the son also does he didn't even come up come here to set up his own stuff amen you know it's what the father wants we have to be careful in church be careful with our own personal preferences because our own personal preferences could close our hearts to what God wants to do in his church. Amen? So in, in the ministry of Jesus, we, we see him, and the reason why he could tell us to pray your kingdom come is because he lets us know God wants us to enjoy and experience the kingdom. Isn't that good to know? He, to, to have God's rule and reign in our lives, his protection, his provision in our lives. In Luke 12 and 32, Jesus says, Do not be afraid, little, little flock. Your father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. You can have it. All that heaven has for, for you, you can have it. I want you to experience it. I want you to live in it. I want you to walk in it. I want you to be blessed by it. You can have it. So pray, pray, pray. Your kingdom come. John the Baptist was the forerunner of our Lord, and he preached the message of surrendering to the kingdom. You know what he said? Repent. Look at your neighbor and say, that's surrender. <laughs> Repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Yeah, yeah. Kingdom of heaven is near you. Repent. That word in the Greek, metanoia, it means to change your mind for the better. Everybody say, for the better. Yeah. To change it for the better. It means turning from sin and contrition toward God. Give up your sinful life. Relinquish your control. Relinquish your self-interest. Relinquish your own appetites, your own quest for power. Relinquish your selfishness. Come on, somebody say, I surrender. I surrender. Jesus told that to Nicodemus. Nicodemus came and spoke with him by night and said, Verily, I tell you that no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of the water and of the Spirit. Yeah, yeah. You have to be born again. Yeah. Amen? Amen? You have to take on the new and give up the, the old to have this. The kingdom is for those who accept Jesus as Lord and Savior uh, in the new birth and are led and fed by his word and led by the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen? Now, here's what I want to tell you. When you pray this prayer, it's not just a prayer of surrender, but in the surrendering, you're also asking 
for expansion. It's a prayer for expansion. And the reason why we need to pray this prayer is because we live in the world that is still influenced and dominated by the evil one, by Satan. Amen? Any of y'all seen any evil lately? Huh? On the job? Come on. In the news? Come on. There's evil all around us. I almost asked, it, did you see any? Have you seen any in your home? But I was afraid. We, we have to ask, your kingdom come. Satan is called the prince of this world. Kingdom, kingdom. Ephesians 2 and 2, Paul says, you used to live like that, in the rest, like the rest of the world, full of sin, obeying Satan, the mighty prince of the air, the evil one. And what we need to understand is recognize why this prayer is so important in this day and time. This, this prayer to have a surrendered life, this prayer to have the kingdom of God come because we're in a fight down here on earth. Good against evil. Wherever you see evil and wickedness abound, you need to be praying your kingdom come. Amen? Sexual immorality, impure thoughts, lustful pleasure, hostility, quarreling, fussing and fighting, jealousy, fits of rage, selfishness, uh, hatred, division, envy, drunkenness, wild living. People always blaming everybody else and never accepting blame for what they do. You need to pray your kingdom come. Every time you see a marriage on the brink, your kingdom come. Every time you see a child going the wrong way, your kingdom come. Every time you face the wickedness on your job and dog eat dog and backstabbing and lying and conniving, somebody needs to pray, your kingdom come. Our children are going to schools and have to worry about somebody bringing a gun and to take lives of innocent children. You need to pray, your kingdom come. Your kingdom come. Come against this evil. Come against this wickedness. And if that evil is in your home, you need to be praying. Your kingdom come. When you, when you pray this, you are asking for an overthrow. <laughs> come on, somebody. You're asking for an overthrow. Your kingdom come, come, come get this devil out of here. Come on, I know you're strong enough. You're bad enough. Come get him out. Get him out. Ruining lives. Get him out. Your, your kingdom. Come. Come on. I, I know somebody needs to say this. Because I, 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 I don't go to your house, but I know you need to say it. Come on, say it's time for an eviction. Come on. It, it, it's time for an eviction. We're going to stop this mess in our home. It's time for an eviction. All this fussing and fighting, all this talk about divorce, it's time for an eviction. Our children being disobedient, it's time for an eviction. Satan, get out. God, you come in. Come on, say, come on in. I surrender. What I'm doing ain't working. Come on in. Washman Nee, in his classic book, The Prayer Ministry of the Church, wrote, 
we ought to pray to God to extend the boundary of the kingdom of heaven to reach this earth. Extend the boundaries. You know, y'all remember when you were kids and they used to have this little contest of who's who's the baddest? <laughs> they draw that line. Draw that line. <laughs> that, that threat is a confrontation. Come on, somebody. We need to pray your kingdom come. God, come on, cross this line. Come on, I, I'm going to work tomorrow and I don't want to go. Because they crazy and evil. But God, there's a confrontation. Good and, and gets evil. Come on. Cross this line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, extend your kingdom. Yeah. The devil's been winning. The devil has been advancing. But God, you can push him back. Yeah. God, you can push him back. God, you can get him out of my face. You can get him out of my life. Yeah. Yeah. This is a territorial battle. Sometimes the territory is in your mind. Come on, get him out. You need more word in you, get him out. Your kingdom come is also a prayer for change. We surrender so that we can get a change. You've heard it said, prayer what? Changes things. But I want you to know that the first and primary thing prayer changes is you. So when you pray your kingdom come, you really talk about you first. God, I need to change. My thoughts need to change. My speech needs to change. My habits need to change. My fears need to change. Your kingdom come. So you want God's kingdom manifested in your life. And there ought to be some way for you to tell, some marker for you to tell. I want to give you a look at two here, Romans 14 and 17. The Apostle Paul writing to the church at Rome says, the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy. Righteousness, peace, and joy. Y'all remember this, this verse this week because you can ascertain in your own life whether you are flowing and functioning or experiencing the kingdom. Is, is there righteousness? Do you have any peace? Are you still worried about everything? <laughs> you still afraid of everything? Is there any joy in your life? Hmm? Because Paul tells us the kingdom of God, you will experience that. Amen? Amen. Now look at what Jesus says here. He Jesus was healing, and then his antagonists, the Pharisees, tried to suggest that he was healing under the power and the spirit of the demonic. 
And this is what Jesus says in Matthew 12 and 28. But if I drive out demons by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. Did y'all hear that? You know the kingdom is manifested when you see the demon driven out. Did y'all get that? When you see the power of God overcome and overthrow whatever's been oppressing you. Amen? And, and somebody today needs to pray that right now because there's a demon on your track. Come on, somebody. Messing with your mind, messing with your family, messing with your children. You need to pray it right now. Your kingdom come, God. And let me see the overflow. Let me see the overthrow. Let me see your power existing. Jesus said, you'll know it. You'll know it. Because I, I am opposing evil. I'm not in a partnership with it. I'm opposing it. Are y'all with me? Come on, say, your kingdom come. Come on, say it like you mean it, your kingdom come. Now say, I surrender. Now this next petition, part of this petition, he says, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God gave us as men free will. We can make our own decisions. We have our own desires. I never forget when I was a kid, my mother being a teacher, very strong disciplinarian, Christian woman. Oh, she was hard. She was hard. And I kept saying, I'd be glad when I graduate from high school. <laughs> I'd be glad when I go to college because I'm going to make my own decision. Anybody like me? <clears throat> oh, and I got out and made my own decision. And it didn't take me long to find out that my decisions could get me in trouble. Come on, look at your neighbor. Say, not just the pastor, you too, your decision. You done got into some trouble using your own free will. Where you, you gonna go where you wanna go, drink what you wanna drink, hang with who you wanna hang with. In fact, it was the free will that got Adam and Eve in trouble. So Jesus instructs us that we need to pray for the surrender of our will. Your will be done. This is a prayer for obedience. Because if his will is going to be done, that means we have to obey his will. It recognizes that everything in heaven is in perfect obedience to the will of the Father. Everything, look at it, can you imagine God? Everything is going right up there. Because the last joker that tried to rebel and act a fool got kicked out of heaven. And he's down here messing with us. So everything is going good and well up there. So he says, pray for the will of God to be done down here as it is up there. There's no rebellion in heaven, no discontent in heaven, no confusion in heaven. Everyone knows who's in charge in heaven. 
Heavenly Father is sovereign and his will is to be done. What he wishes to happen is to happen. What he purposes is to be fulfilled. What he plans is to be followed. It's to be done. It's to become existent. It's to happen in our lives. But we have to surrender our wills. Mm, mm, mm. Our wills. We got to surrender it. Your will be done. This is also a prayer of release. You see, what hinders God's will being done is us. It's the believers. Gosh, what a thought. We're the ones that's hindering the will because we're indifferent to it. We will go weeks without reading this book. We'll go days without our praying. And the less we know about this, the less we can pray about this and walk in this. So you have to see what you're doing is hindering his will. Hindering. So everybody say, release, God. Release, 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 release. I need your will released in my life, God. I need it released in my life. I need more of your word. I need to talk to you more, God. Release it. Release it. I don't want to hinder your will on my job, in my home, with my children, in my marriage, in my business affairs. I need it released. Some of us are broke today because we're not following this and praying what it says to pray. So we need to say release. Come on, say release. 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 And when you say your, your will be done, you're also praying for divine instruction. Divine instruction. The psalmist says, teach me to do your will, for you are my God. So you need to be taught. You don't just wake up knowing God's will. You need to be taught God's will. That's why every one of you should be in our Wednesday night classes, freedom, deep free uh, plays. You ought to be there. And, and Sundays, have your Bibles open. Write you some notes. Go back and read that thing. Check it out. Because we hinder God's will when we are ignorant of it. Yeah. Yeah. Just think, he, he, he has so much he wants to give you, to do for you, to open for you, to bless you with. But when you're ignorant of it, you hinder his will being done in your life. Can you say amen to that? And so we need to develop a passion for his will like never before. He's our sovereign king, our heavenly father. We need to pray. Our prayers need to focus on what God wants to do. God, I know you want to do something awesome in my life. I know you have plans for me. You know how we like to quote Jeremiah. <laughs> Come on, somebody. But, but you need to find out what the plans are. Amen. You, you got to discover it, and you got to pray it, and you got to know it. You got to walk in it. Your will be done. It's also a prayer for patience. It's also a prayer for patience. Because what God wills for you may not be 
for this year. Uh, let me, can I pick on the single? He may have a husband for you or a wife for you. Don't you make the mistake of trying to grab one this year. When the one he has for you is next year. I'm just trying to give an example, that's all. Everybody say, patience. Come on, say it. Your will, God. I want her when you want me to have her. I want him when you want me to have him. I want the promotion when you want me to have it. I want the house, the car. I want all of that when you want me to have it. I want to walk in my anointing when you've got it open for me. I'll be patient. <laughs> the psalmist said it. I waited patiently for the Lord. I waited patiently for him in Psalm 40. And then verse 8, he says, I desire to do your will. That's what I want. I want to do your will. I'll wait. I'll wait. And lastly, this prayer is a prayer. Your kingdom come is a prayer to suffer. Sometimes surrendering to the Father's will means obeying to the point of suffering and death. So you have to understand that when you pray that, if God wants to take you to your cross to experience your resurrection. You're saying your will be your will be done. Your will be done. Jesus said in John 6 and 38, for I've come down from heaven not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. And his will was for him to suffer, bleed, and, and die. And then I, I'm so glad that the Bible is so true. But he, the Bible even lets us seek in on Jesus' wrestling in the garden. The human nature saying, Father, all things are possible for you. Why don't you let this cup pass from me? <laughs> this thing is rough. This thing is tough. Look, I, I, let me go heal some more. Let me go preach some more. But then here comes the surrender. Yet not my will. But yours. I'll go to the cross. Somebody ought to thank him for that. Thank him. Thank him for his surrender. Thank him for his blood he shed on Calvary's cross. Come on, somebody. Thank him for the tomb. Thank him for resurrection morning. All because he surrendered his will. Amen. So here's, here's the pattern. Watch when he gives us this. He says, God already has his will, what he wants to do in your life, what he wants to give you, all of that. But he makes it known through the word and through the spirit of God talking to you. But it is incumbent upon you to pray. You've got to pray it. You've got to pray it. You discover God's will when you God, Spirit of God tells you what God's will is. You've got to pray it. Amen? Come on, say pray it. Pray it. 
Now, here's the thing about it. You've got to understand that to get it, you've got to give. Uh, come on, look at your neighbor and say, to get it, you got to give up. Anybody remember the, the show, The Price is Right? You remember in that show, you could have uh, bid it on something and got it. Let's say you got a stainless steel re refrigerator freezer, you know. Yeah, it's, it's worth $1,500. So you're in the running for the big prize. Y'all remember yeah. the concept? Yeah. You got it, you got it. So the guy then comes to you and, and says, look, 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 look. You come on down, you, you're in this thing for the grand prize. It's a Chevrolet Impala. Hey, everybody, come on, everybody. Hey, Chevrolet Impala. But then he asks you the question, do you want to keep what you got? to get this Chevrolet Impala. Yeah. So there is that moment of decision. Yeah. You know how they do that. Look back if they got some friends back in the audience. And look back. What you, what you say? <laughs> look at that. Somebody back in the back. Get rid of that refrigerator. Go for the car. That's the way the kingdom of God is. When you pray, your kingdom come. You've already got something. But what you have isn't of the value of what God has for you. Will you give it up? Will you give up your control? Would you give up your power? Would you give up your own ideas and the way you like to do things? Would you give up your wills, your wants? Because up there is the grand prize. And you only get it when you give up what you have. I'm through, I'm through. I'm through. Would you stand to your feet? Stand to your feet. What a time in the Word today. What a time we've experienced together in worship. Through the songs, through the prayer, through giving and Wow, what a word from our Lord coming through our pastor, speaking directly to the issues that we face. I am convicted, and I hope that you are convicted, because I know that the Holy Spirit makes himself manifest and evident in every message that comes through this pulpit. And God is speaking, and he's speaking to you today. And so there's something that you can do. Uh, you can you can join First Metropolitan Church. Uh, we have that information on our website at myfirstmet.com. Go there. Uh, tell us that you want to join. Tell us you want more information, and we will contact you. Uh, but also, there on the website, well, we want you to become a disciple. We we want you to become a believer in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and experience the life to the full that we are experiencing together as brothers and sisters. And I believe that this message has spoken directly to you. And if you have not given your life to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, accepted his blood provision for you, don't worry. We've all sinned. We've all fallen short. You were just like us. We are just like you. Come and join a, a body of believers who are pressing towards a mark of righteousness and living a standard of holiness that is giving God glory on this earth. I want to invite you to do that. And for those of you who are just looking to connect with the church, you already know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. You're looking for a place where you belong. This is the place where you belong. So join us. Go to the website. We're looking forward to hearing from you.
Hey, now thank you for joining us today on our broadcast as God did some very, very special things in your midst. We want to invite you out to become a partner, to subscribe, to connect with us, to watch all of the streams, to see all of the Bible study, to attend the events, because this is First Metropolitan Church, the place where you belong.